The two newest legendary archer commanders, Zug Liang and Dido, are finally revealed in Rise of Kingdoms. So today we're going to be going over everything that we know because this is absolutely going to change the open field meta in Rise of Kingdoms. What's going on, guys? Cheers. This information was so exciting. I'm drinking a Diet Coke at nine in the morning. Now I'm recording this video before these two commanders are officially in the game. So if any of the information in this video changes, I will put it in the pinned comment below. Now, of course, if this information is absolutely wrong, you're not even going to see this video because I'm not even going to post it. So rest assured that what we're going to be talking about here is at least 90 to 95% accurate. And anything that changes will be in the pinned comment down below. Now we got to talk about Zugliang first because, oh my God, this commander might actually mark a new level of power creep in rise of kingdoms. Like this commander is so unbelievably powerful that if he's not nerfed before he's put into the game, this might be the most powerful open field commander in rise of kingdoms. Hands down. Like this is absolutely insane. So let's quickly go over the skills here now of course as you can see here Zhu Liang is an archer versatility and skill commander and typically the versatility tree is horrible on its own but whenever I see the versatility tree I think okay this is going to be an open field machine and oh my god is that actually going to be the case now at the time of recording this I don't know if this is going to be a wheel of fortune commander or a mightiest governor commander I would suspect that Zhu Liang is going to be a wheel of fortune commander again if that's wrong I'll put it in the comments section below but typically when when we see versatility commanders they end up on the wheel of fortune and Dito is an archer garrison and support commander and typically we would see that as a mightiest governor reward so that's my prediction hopefully that is accurate because Zugliang is going to be insane and I hope everybody can get their hands on him okay let's take a look at his active skill it says that he has a rage requirement of 1000 and deals direct damage to up to five nearby enemy troops with a damage factor of 2000 damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15 percent in addition all targets deal 15 percent less damage for three seconds what in the world is that active skill that is that's the best active skill in the game like okay first of all the other commanders in rise of kingdoms that have 2000 damage factor or higher do not hit five targets they simply don't if you look at a commander like YSG for example he has 1700 with his expertise if you look at commanders like Nebu he has a five target AoE that does 1500 we've never seen a 2000 damage factor five target AoE that is absolutely ridiculous but the fact that it also does a massive debuff to five targets hello what is 15 percent reduced damage for three seconds that's insane that is absolutely insane now this active skill does not say if this is a forward facing cone shape area or if it's a circular aoe early reports of this skill are suggesting that it is a circle but i don't know for sure either way it literally doesn't matter this is still probably the best open field active skill in the game even if it is a cone shape even if it's like Mehmed's active skill cone shape it's still probably one of the best active skills in the game okay this is a ridiculous amount of skill damage you need this commander we we are one skill in you need this commander there's just no way around it this is insane moving on to his second skill called borrowing arrows it says archer units led by this commander gain 30 percent increased health okay and deal five percent extra damage straight up like you could stop there and that would be ridiculous but it goes on whenever this commander's troop is inflicted with a control effect while on the map it has a 50 percent chance to negate the effect and deal direct damage with a 500 damage factor to the attacking troop this effect can trigger once every five seconds so okay I, I don't know if this is going to deal direct damage to the target that you're hitting or if this is going to deal direct damage to the target that gave you the control effect now for those of you that don't know what a control effect is that is silencing that is disarming and that is heal immunity this is essentially the same thing as the expertise on Boudicca Prime except hers has an 80 percent chance of occurring his is only 50 but you only need to unlock the second skill you don't even have to put a point in this for it to be a 50 percent chance of this happening which is ridiculous now the reason that it matters if it deals damage to the target you're hitting or to the target that gave you the cult control effect is because that's going to change how players use this commander for example this sounds really good with a commander like Artemisia because first of all she's already super tanky and then adding 
30 percent of health to her is just insane because they both have aoe which is un ungodly basically but if you get the control effect she has a self silence if you guys didn't know um if you get that self silence you have a chance to remove it but if you do are you going to deal damage to yourself that's what i'm worried about here obviously if you deal damage to yourself then that wouldn't be very good but if not if you're just going to deal damage to the target you're hitting then that's huge now it says to the attacking troop so i suspect that this will not deal damage to yourself but again we'll have to test and actually see how this is programmed because the wording here isn't 100 percent clear either way this is insane five percent damage hello 30 percent health unbelievable moving on to the third skill it says if this commander's troop contains only archer units it deals 20 percent extra skill damage normal attacks from this commander's troop have a 10 percent chance to increase attack of their archer units by 50 percent for three seconds this effect can trigger once every five seconds okay so this is literally like Boudicca Prime and Isong Ye combined into one commander like that's how good this commander is because obviously Isong Ye has a high damage factor circular AoE and he has a 10 percent chance to give him 100 archer attack here we have a 10 percent chance you only gain 50 percent archer attack but you also gain a 20 percent skill damage bonus and again on remember on the second skill you have a 50 percent chance to negate control effects which is what we saw on Boudicca Prime and oh my god this is I don't know what to say this skill is just a really solid skill these are things that Zhu Liang is going to want but one thing that's worth noting is that this skill has a five second cooldown the previous skill we talked about also has a five second cooldown and what I don't understand is that a lot of these super powerful commanders uh that have recently come out with like eight second cooldowns right we saw like CPO Prime has an eight second cooldown I think Boudicca Prime has an eight second cooldown here we see two five second cooldowns like that is insane not only are these super powerful skills but the cooldown is lower than cooldowns of other commanders and uh, again I'm gonna go on record and say I would be surprised if this commander wasn't nerfed before he's put into the game so something in this video might be wrong because this is just this is so good but believe it or not it actually gets crazier because his fourth skill says whenever this commander uses an active skill their troop gains the marquee effect which increases damage dealt by 10 percent for 10 seconds if it does not already have it so right away on your first active skill that you pop you're gaining 10 percent damage for 10 seconds okay that's huge if their troop contains only archer units and it has the marquee effect whenever this commander uses an active skill they will consume the marquee effect to deal direct damage to up to three nearby enemy troops with a damage factor of 1500 direct damage dealt through this method is not affected by buffs to skill damage so that is like on his third skill he has 20 percent bonus skill damage that's not going to apply here but that doesn't matter because we're talking about 50 this is an active skills worth of skill damage 1500 damage factor to three targets he has two aoe's he has two really powerful aoe's what in the what this has to be nerfed this commander has got to be nerfed before he comes to the game if not this is a whole new tier this is not even legendary this is like god mode this is ridiculous amounts of open field damage actually unbelievable actually unbelievable okay but it gets even crazier because his expertise says upon entering battle this commander's troop gains the marquee effect so right away if he's expertise he just starts with it which means your first active skill is going to proc the 1500 damage factor from the fourth skill I mean remember look here if you already have the effect it's consumed and you deal 1500 damage factor in a cone so you're immediately double procking AoE on his first active skill hit first from his active skill which is 2000 damage factor to five targets and then it's immediately going to consume this which is going to deal another 1500 damage factor to three targets how how is that balanced there's no way that is god tier that is god tier right away but it doesn't stop there because it lasts for 15 seconds so this is actually even it's an even longer duration than he would get from his fourth skill however again you're going to just consume this right away uh it says each time their burning of Jin Ye or Marquis Zongwu skills deal skill damage so that is either his active skill or his fourth skill that we just talked about this commander's troop immediately gains 30 rage what are you talking about so okay so not only are we double AoEing but every time he deals damage with his AoE he gains 30 rage so on his first 
rage cycle he's gonna gain 60 rage i mean unless i'm missing something this has to be the best open field commander in the game like I I can't imagine a world where he's not nerfed. I, I genuinely can. Now let's talk about some of the downsides of Zhu Liang. Okay. First of all, he has a huge amount of Archer health, but besides that, he gets no other stats other than the 50% Archer attack that has a chance of triggering. So he has a lot of the best stat that you could ask for, but it's sort of the only one that he gets besides that Archer attack. So that's kind of a downside, but he's doing so many other good things. It's unbelievable. Now the other, the, the obvious flaw, right? The obvious flaw with Zhu Liang is that he has no March speed. Okay. So he's going to be pretty slow in the open field as far as archers are concerned. So you're going to have to pair him with somebody that has Archer March speed. Obviously Boudicca prime gets 10% March speed and Nebu gets 15% March speed. So those are both obvious choices here. If you don't pair with somebody who has March speed, you're going to be super slow, but I still feel like you're going to deal so much damage that you won't even mind being warmed i mean obviously you're gonna lose the trade but like it's just so much damage man this is this is unbelievable okay I, I, if i were to predict i would say players are gonna keep using Boudicca prime with ysg and then probably zhu liang with nebu that's my suspicion because i mean obviously Boudicca prime with with zhu liang is going to be insane as well but they both have the chance to remove that control effect so you're kind of double stacking that which i mean that essentially will guarantee that you'll never have a control effect right but you may want to split that up between two armies because it obviously adds up to over 100 so you don't really need all that removal of control effects you may want to have you know two commanders in the open field that can't really get controlled i mean that would just be insane or obviously you could just stack everything on Boudicca prime and just have one unbelievable army that's definitely something you could do now with zuli getting out of the way let's talk a little bit more about dito as you can see here dito is an archer garrison and support commander and like i mentioned earlier i would expect this to be the mightiest governor commander which is good because i would definitely rather have zuli yang but let's take a look at what dito is actually doing dito's active skill soul of carthage has a rage requirement of a thousand that says deals direct damage to a target troop with a damage factor of 2000. if the target is a rallied army this skill also reduces the skill damage of up to five enemy troops near this commander's troop by 30 percent for three seconds so this to me already screams like an anti-swarm garrison i mean all the mega powerful players in the game right now uh really like to swarm down garrisons because they're just super well giga chads and if they decide to do that with dito she's at least going to reduce their skill damage by a significant amount for three seconds is this going to change whether or not you swarm a garrison probably not but it's still worth noting that it is a pretty significant debuff and 2000 damage factor to a single target that is pretty good dito's second skill weeping queen says archer units led by this commander gain 20 percent increased defense and deal five percent extra damage to infantry if this commander's troop contains only archer units it takes 10 percent less normal attack damage that's a really solid skill very tanky obviously normal attack damage for really long rallies is where a large portion of the damage comes from so taking less of that is good and of course as an archer commander countering infantry makes a lot of sense so I, I think right away you know we see a slam dunk here for countering infantry rallies will she be able to do that I don't know but that seems to be the case here and what they're trying to accomplish moving on to her third skill queenly zeal archer units led by this commander gain 20 percent increased attack while garrisoned in a stronghold or your city the normal attacks of this commander's troop have a 20 percent chance to inflict the ambushed effect on the target for three seconds which prevents the target troop from benefiting from effects triggered by being surrounded this effect can trigger once every eight seconds so this appears to be a direct counter to a Tark rally uh because what other like prominent rallies exist in the game right now that have a strong buff that occurs when they are surrounded i mean that's Tarek's active skill that's exactly what he's doing and it is a pretty substantial amount of bonus damage when he is expertise but otherwise if you're not being hit by a Tarek, this i mean like is this really gonna do that much i mean henry's fourth skill says when attacked there's a 10 percent chance to deal direct damage but this doesn't say anything about being surrounded and this specifically says that it counters the buffs that you get if they occur from being surrounded so uh, this seems again this seems like just a tar counter that's pretty much it which like i know Tarek is infantry rally meta but he's not like 
the rally meta like he's not the best rally in the game it seems odd to me that they would build a commander specifically to counter a commander that isn't really the best rally in the game and as an infantry main i'm gonna just take that personally <laughs> moving on to dito's fourth skill beacon of birsa it says while garrisoned in a stronghold or your city archer units led by this commander gain 20 percent increased health and can reduce incoming skill damage by 15 percent once every 10 seconds so here we're seeing 20 percent archer health we also have 20 percent archer defense on the second skill and we have 20 percent archer attack on the third skill so we have a really significant amount of archer stats here plus you have 10 percent less normal attack damage and you have 15 percent less skill damage taken which is really huge now a 10 second cooldown is really long which means you're probably going to get this every other skill cycle from your enemy so they're going to hit you you're going to reduce it by 15 and then they're probably going to hit you again before this 10 second cooldown is over which means you're not going to gain the benefit from this so I mean you could kind of look at this as like seven and a half percent skill damage taken reduction I guess right if it's roughly going to occur every other skill cycle you take either way uh lots of tanky stuff going on here with Dito I mean this seems like a really good counter to infantry which would make sense it's an archer garrison like this is the way to go and remember on her active skill she's also reducing the skill damage that the enemy deals by 30 percent and also for other targets in the open field if it's a rally so yeah this is really tanky as a garrison which is really good for an archer garrison taking a look at the expertise here this is actually an improvement of her third skill so it says archer units led by this commander gain 40 percent increased attack okay so remember it was 20 now it's 40. they've doubled it for an expertise that is huge while garrisoned in a stronghold of your city the normal attacks of this commander's troop have a 30 percent chance to reduce the target troops defense by 40 percent so now we're talking okay remember before it only gave you the ambushed effect with a 20 percent chance of occurring now they've bumped that up to 30 percent and not only does it give them that ambushed effect which prevents them from gaining benefit from effects triggered by being surrounded but it also reduces their defense by 40 percent this expertise is unreal this is a really powerful expertise this is i mean this brings that skill to a whole new level before it was kind of like oh yeah this is a counter to Tarek. now it's like we have a ridiculous amount of attack you just lost 40 percent defense and if you're a Tarek, you specifically are screwed dito is looking really really good and if you are an archer main and you have archer garrison you probably are going to want to get this commander i mean this is super tanky tons of stats tons of ways to reduce the damage you take and you're dealing 2000 damage factor to the rally that's hitting you this seems like a huge win for archer garrison is this going to be the garrison meta i don't think so because we currently are seeing a lot of archer rallies and we currently have really powerful infantry garrisons typically we never see a, a meta where the best rally and best garrison use the same troop type because effectively that just doubles the burn rate of your troops in your kingdom in a kvk and then you just run out of those troops faster and then you can't do either of those things you can't rally or garrison with that combo so typically it's better to have a best garrison be one troop type and then the best rally type be another troop type that's usually how it goes but this does seem to be like if you need an archer garrison like Dito is probably gonna be the way to go but of course we'll just have to wait and see and again the information here could change by the time that she comes into the game now if you made it all the way to the end of this video you are contractually obligated to drop a thumbs up on the video you must do it otherwise believe it or not you actually go to jail can you believe that that's insane but yeah drop a thumbs up on the video guys if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below about these commanders. Does this mark a new era of power creep in the game? And are you going to be getting either Zugliang or Dito? Now, I can say for me, if the information for Zugliang does not change by the time he comes into the game, this will be an instant max for me. This will be an instant expertise. You will essentially need this commander, especially if the active skill is a circle. But either way, instant max for me. Also, again, be sure to check the pinned comment to see if any thing in this video did change I just wanted to make sure that I got this video out to you guys as soon as possible so I do apologize if anything is different with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace